Honorable viewers, I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel, Department of English. Today's topic is a dissertation upon roast pig. So let's get started. At first, I'm going to discuss summary, then I will discuss analysis. The narrator opens the essay by asserting that for a long period of early human history, People did not cook their meat but ate it raw. He claims that this was hinted at in the writings of Confucius, who mentioned an hour, an era known as the cook's holiday, implying that the Chinese did not cook animals prior to his writings. According to the narrator Confucius, essay goes on to describe how roasting was discovered by Babo, the son of Winyard Ho Thi. Babo was one day playing with fear, as he was owned to do, and accidentally burned down his family's cottage along with the nine pigs that were trapped in the blaze. While trying to devise an explanation for what happened, Bobo was tempted by the smell of the burnt pigs and went to test them. He found these burnt pigs delicious and could not stop eating them. Hooty was not just upset with Bobo for burning down the cottage, but for being enough of a fool to eat the pigs. Bobo eventually convinced his father to try the pig, and the father loved it too, but they agreed to keep the burnt pigs a secret. Yet more and more frequently, a cottage fire could be seen at Hoti's property at all hours of the day and night. When their secret was found out, Hoti and Bobo were placed on trail in their town. During this trail, the Jaros asked to try the burnt pig in question and finding it delicious, they decided to let the father and son off. The Zaz was outraged, but a few days later there was one of those mysterious fires at his house too. Soon enough, these fires were occurring all around town, and he burned pig became a cherished food. Done with this story. The narrator begins signing the prices of roast pig, speaking of the crackling skin and succulent fat. He draws a humorous link between the swine so often considered a gluttonous base animal and the type of man who enjoys eating that swine. The narrator admits to enjoying all of the fine meats available, from strains full to westerns, and sharing them with friends. He then recalls how as a child, having nothing to offer a beggar on the street, he brought that beggar a pump cake his anute, sorry, auntie had baked. He blames the hypocrisy of his giving spirit on the indiscretion. The essay concludes with an anecdote about how ancient, ancient people used to sacrifice pigs by whipping them, raising a moral conundrum about enjoying the meat of that animal. But the narrator seems indifferent to the conundrum and suggests a tasty sauce made of shallots to eat the pig with. 
Now I am going to discuss analysis. Among the most light-hearted of Lamb's essays is this pretty wiling coming dissertation on the pleasure of eating roasted pig. It features a copier's use of the literary device of hyper hyperbole, with Lamb going to all sorts of eccentric ends to extol the flavor of roasted pork. The logic of hyperbole is also evident in Lamb's use of heightened tone to tell the absurd the story of how roast pork was discovered after a house fire in China. Once again, Lamb con constructs literary devices and narrative forms in such a way that he manages to snake some fiction into his essay work. The fable he constructs speaks to how old it is that humans eat cooked animals at all. We can see the stops of romanticism on full display in this essay. Even though the subject of that romantic meditation is a curious one, Lamb uses florid language and a subjective voice to give a vivid account of his experience with his subject. But whereas, for instance, fellow romanticist, romanticist Henry David Thoreau uses these techniques to describe Walden Pond and meditate on how his experience there reflects one mass participation in society. Lamb makes a culinary delight the subject of this romantic inquiry in indulging his Epicurean side and reflecting on the way good food makes friends out of those who may otherwise be suspicious of one another. The culinary essay in and of itself is a storied subgenre. The most famous on maybe Jonathan Swift's a modest proposal which satirically advocates cooking and eating England's children. A more recent popular example is David Foster Wallace's considered the lobster. Which, like Lamb's essay, explores the delights of eating lobster, but unlike Lamb's lingers on the inherent cruelty of cooking and eating the animal. In the case of Swift's, Walsh's, and Lamb's essays, there is an essential social component to their discussion of a specific food and they seek to extract some wisdom about the human condition from practices of cooking and eating. So that's all about today's topic. For the timing, thanks for your patience hearing.